Okay, beautifuls and beloveds. I forgot to do this in the second part. I don't know what we're calling this three-part series, but whatever. You know, didn't seem to care. So this is what I want to know. How far back does this go? Is it just current times? Or was it throughout my entire life that you found out that I was an aspiring choreographer, dancer, singer, performer, screenwriter, author? How far back does this go? Using the means for the moment. So maybe you didn't have a social media platform in which to glean photos and videos from. But there was the telephone, analog, not digital at the time. Okay. Um, there were picture development centers, we call photo, photo development labs, um, which was very interesting because during some portions of time there, you saw those photos, remember? Yeah. When people die in our family, we got a whole bunch of photos and videos and everything. Thank God. Um, somebody color timed my hair. Not, you've got like black hair, which is amazing. Like a brown color, a deep brown. I was like, I've never had brown hair before. Mm -hmm. I was like, somebody did something. And then somebody else took pictures of me at the same party at the same time on the same date and then it was more of my natural hair color yeah and i was like something very wicked happened here and i think there was the same photo lab too we'll have to look on the the because we had the envelopes and stuff yeah we were from the same city the same people that had those photos and we found so much out and i'm like this is really interesting really interesting and then we find some photos that look exactly like promos for films mm -hmm. my photos my family photos and i'm like wtf you know what i'm saying like how dare you access right there so I'm like that's really interesting so my thing is did they know all these years it was the same Noel right mm -hmm. and they say oh I wonder if that's her and they found me again because my name has changed depends who owned me I'm being very facetious Sometimes I like to be bitchy about it, too, because, you know, I don't like that ownership thing. I want to have my own last name, but whatever. I'm respecting God, <laughs> you know, and the sanctity and institution of marriage. So, you know, I was adopted, you know, I had a biological father and professional name. So it's changed several times, you know, just kind of curious. And, uh, you know, the light of Christ in my life. I think, what was your perception? You, you had an interesting thing about when the inside here and being reflected outside. You wanna share that? It's really sweet. Um, I'd have to recall it. Um, remind me what I was saying. Well, you said something about how I just don't age and you oh, had a okay, reason why. Yeah, it's like over the course of time, a person's way of life starts to show on their skin, almost literally, to the point where if they're a bad person, they'll actually start to age a certain way. And if they're a good person, it seems like they don't necessarily age very much at all. Yeah, and what's reflected from, how'd you say it, from the inside reflects out, like the personality and mm -hmm. living a sin-free life as best as you can. I thought that was really a great insight that you had there. And I'm like, gee, thank you. That was so sweet. It was very encouraging of you. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So, you know, because people are like, how do you do it? Oh, granted, I've taken some real bad looking pictures, <laughs> even in video. And if the settings aren't right and the lighting isn't right, I can make myself look very bad. I can make a baby look very old too. It's not hard to do. You know, they say, what is it? Photos never lie. Mm -hmm. Ah, but lighting does, my friends. Bad lighting. <laughs> yeah. 
That's very true. Um, so, you know, that's my saying. I, I also do that, too. I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, we found somebody. I sent a card to somebody, and I signed my name. You know how you sign your first name? And they used that, and they put it up on their site. And I was like, that's my signature. And they're using my name. And they just so happen to be, what, lighting designers. It's like everything that I do, they decided to mirror me. Yeah. With, with my name. And I'm like, I don't think so. That's a little too coincidental. Obviously, yes. it's got to be from the same corporation that's bothering me. Well, obviously. Yeah. They prop them up. They're like, oh, thank you. I think we'll just steal her identity completely. And it's like, no, you don't, because the feds are waiting, just waiting for you to do something like that completely, and they, they're going to put your asses in jail so fast. Don't even try it. Be smart people for a change. Yeah. But, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so demented. Yeah. It's like watching, we've been watching Heart to Heart. <laughs> Remember that show? God bless it. That's my boss's, old boss's yeah. TV show. You, you know that story. And uh, it's like watching a very bad Heart to Heart episode. Very bad, <laughs> you know. That show is supposed to be tongue in cheek, though. But I'm like, oh my God, please don't go there, people. Just don't. Um, yeah. So I'm speaking positively. They're not going to do that. They're going to stop. And a lot of people have listened. Thank you. And, you know, let's also thank the people who have stopped. We can't say names and companies at all right now. We can't. I'm sure they understand why. Yeah. It protects them, too, right now. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't need people going after them right now, either. <laughs> but you know who you are. And we thank you. There will be a time. I promise you, there will be a time. And please, if we forget or we didn't know, please send us a letter when the time comes saying we had helped you and this is what we did. We want to thank you publicly and we want to make sure that, you know, even if you did something wrong to us, yeah, it won't go down as bad for you. That's just how it works. You know that. There's nothing I made up, it's nothing illegal. That's just what the law provides, you know, and we'll be glad to be that way for you, obviously, you know, we're good people, but you're going to have to help us a lot, <laughs> and I'm sure you know how, you're probably talking it over your peeps now, you know, that's good, help us, we should be a lot further along because of all the time and talents and work that we put behind everything, and obviously what we own. There's residuals, there's compensation, there's so much credit, there's, oh my. Yeah, all of this. We are dealing with it professionally. We are doing what we have to. Oh, don't, don't mistaken. We are rough with some people. Nothing illegal. But sometimes you have to put your foot down and speak your mind, okay? You have to. We are the ones who are supposed to be serviced, like with our dance festival. I'm not going to say we kiss everybody's rear ends. I don't mean it like that. We treat them respectfully. We're like, what can we do for you? Because we're serving them. We're servicing them. It doesn't make us their slaves or their servants, but we have servant hearts, meaning how can we help you? We're trying to be extremely transparent. We're communicating as much as we know with everything, right? Mm -hmm. That's not going on for us with certain people in certain areas in government and uh, hospitals and medical stuff that has to do with the accidents, professionals, whether they're attorneys or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. That's not being done for us by everyone. So that causes a problem. And then we're like, are you connected to any of this? Is that why you're doing this? You have to ask. We have to know, friend or foe. Because if you're a foe, we need to get you out of our lives. If you're a friend, we embrace you. Not fake friends, no, what do you call it? Uh, wolves and sheep clothes, we don't deal with that either. And the law will deal harshly with you. And so will we. Good Lord. But anyway, so I thought that was kind of interesting. And uh, it's about time. 
we started speaking up more. Right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, again, thank you for everybody who has been helping and working on it and doing what needed to be done. But uh, this whole mirroring thing, really, it's coming off as you guys are trying to uh, suppress what we're doing. And then my next question is why, if that is the case. And uh, who are you affiliated with? Why do that? Like I said, I'm somebody's daughter. He's somebody's son. Christopher is somebody's son. But why do this? You know more about us. You know about us more than we know about you. So already you have an unbalanced, unfair edge. You know, it'll be your undoing. But that was your own undoing, not ours. We didn't do anything to you. I'm telling you, it's quite quite horrible. So uh, you guys might want to tell your colleagues about what's going on. Be careful. We have been sending out the warning to people that either we don't know their alliance, they may be being fed. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Uh, that might be being fed our words. You might have hot material. Be careful who your speech writers are, your press people are, um, booking agents, all of that. I don't want people to get paranoid or overly frightened by anything, but you should know. You should be prepared to fire these people or deal with them harshly. Um, we've had people try, and I'm not ashamed. We shouldn't be ashamed. We're human beings. We are not infallible. We have had people try to infiltrate our company You know, be careful who you have running your social media platforms. They like to target that. I once did a video, hey, if I were a bad guy, I would target the marketing. Why? Because that's your communication. That's your presentation to the outside world. And uh, you, you know how I was doing this whole wedge thing? Poke here, poke here. You can manipulate people. Like... Somebody comes into our company, drops certain hints, texting or, you know, online or however that goes. I, I'm, I'm not one into that kind of stuff. I don't like it. And then all of a sudden, they were dropping hints to somebody else, and it could hurt them, and we didn't even know about it. And it looks like we are not allied with them when we really are. You yeah. see how that works? Or somebody that we think are, is allied with us, they can have a an insider, a shill, a spy, whatever you want to call it, call them, and uh, they're making us try to think, oh, like I said, oh, she hates me. I was thinking my, my instructor hated me, and that wasn't the case. Remember that? Yes. And I trust that. You need to trust it from what I said, too. Don't forget. Um, so that could be the case same type of thing so be careful who run your social media just do it yourself <laughs> what is all this stuff we have in the world now is it necessary it's Not necessarily it's like we spend all of this time and it's just like why is it we have less time now because now we gotta go back and find that thing instead of just having it in our files and the paper and there you go I worked on the cusp of the digital age being implemented in offices. What a headache. Everyone's like, we gotta get this on digital. We gotta get it on digital. And I'm like, you know what? Keep a hard copy, guys. Something tells me it's just not a good idea. And I'm like, it takes a little bit longer to find it than keying it up. But I said, there's security. How do we know who has access to this, truthfully? You know? Yeah. This was before the internet. I didn't know anything. There was intranet, which was within an office. We shared uh, one cell and have several computers, right? Mm -hmm. Intranet, or uh, yeah, right, intra. Internet was out, outside. I think that's right. So, um, you know, be careful who you give this information to, and who you allow access to your information. Oh my God, talk about hurting, learning the hard way. But we didn't do it. 
Y you know what I mean? People who are just hacking, breaking in, eavesdropping, surveillance. It was unbeknownst to us for a long time. Just like I was saying, how long has this been going on? And what means of technology were being used? Analog phone calls? Mm -hmm. What was that one you found out about AT? Was it AT&T? Um, give me more details. You were saying there was something about a production company and a phone company. Was it AT&T? It was uh, on Wikipedia or something? Uh, I don't know, AT&T owns a specific company? Oh, yeah, something like that. And there was history about what they were doing with phone calls. Is it that company? I don't I know. Don't, probably. I probably. don't want to misspeak. But, you know, seek it out and search it, because that's what we did. We have it printed out somewhere in this mess. Um, you know, how long has it been going on, and what means of access? and why these people in our lives to access. It's like, ooh, you know what? Let's plant somebody in where I was working in Las Vegas. And then all of a sudden they said, ooh, can I read this story you're writing? And then six months later, it comes out as a screenplay and a TV show, very similar. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, that was the only other access point. The jig is up, we're pretty sure now. Yep. And it doesn't let the modern technology people get away with it because they're responsible for this time. Damn, I must be good. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I am, I don't need validation. What I need now is credit and money. Yep. And I need these people to be, leave us alone so we can do our films in peace and not have all this stuff happen. Now, our, our Encopa Films website was completely taken down. It was up, and then that verbiage given to somebody doing a, an anti-trafficking film, which, you know, I applaud you for doing that, but why use our verbiage? Who gave it to you? And then why don't you really represent what trafficking is? It's not an older teenage group of girls and or boys in a prostitution ring. That's a prostitution ring. It can be a part of it. Trafficking, it, it's with the little kids. Mm -hmm. Because they can't fight back. Okay? It's a very high risk fact for the older ones to be used in that kind of a horrible thing. You know? Yeah, good. Do a film about that, fine. But A, don't use our stuff. And you know what? This person who did that film, they modeled it after our Baby Does Heartbeat film in format. Because it was on display. You know, they kept it in their records. We were Emmy nominated for that, by the way, our first project out. And then ever since then, we've been having a really hard time. Mm -hmm. We've got some things done. Praise God. Oh my. But I think that has to do with my name. We changed my name. Yeah. You know, getting married and all that legally, right? Mm hmm. Mm. This is very interesting to us. Damn, this is going to be a great documentary and a great movie and a great book and a great everything. So, all you people who are writing all these books and everything like that, we're going to have our people go through them because we've also found things in my things in other people's books. I'm like, how did you even get this? Well, those authors might not even be real, so... Oh, God, that's another thing we found out. Sometimes in the media, I'm not going to say what kind of media, it's various, um, they don't exist. They're made up until there comes a time for them to have to be manifested. And then all of a sudden they're cast into that persona, that role, that person who didn't exist but does now. That's really kind of weird. Yeah. You know? So it's like it's a real person, but is that really somebody who just stepped in. I mean, we've dealt with that before 
where it's like we thought we were talking to that person and they had a completely different sound and texture to their voice and they acted more like a Christian and then when we hired them or worked with them further or deeper it's like totally different person it was so strange yeah and I'm like wait this person doesn't sound the same at all and they don't know what they're talking about now when they did before remember because I thought they were so knowledgeable in that subject matter and then afterwards it's like oh they weren't mm -hmm. that was kind of weird yeah so I was like hmm I, I was just like hmm very interesting yeah watch wag the dog did you, did you see that yeah we watched okay that what did you think about that it shows how they kind of do this stuff. It also show, kind of shows how there's a lot of holes in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can kind of poke holes in the whole process. Hold on, I really have to get this heater going. You don't mind, do you? No. Yeah, All right, fine. I'll just point it at myself here. Um, it is very interesting. You know, was that the production company warning people? You gotta wonder and say, you know what, guys, get a brain. This is what's going on in our world. Or did these crazy people, you know, copy the film and say, hey, that's a great idea. I tend to think that it's been going on for a while. Yeah. They they made a, a song. It was a hilarious film, by the way. I thought it was great. Well then. Um, <clears throat> and it wasn't... Willie Nelson, who was playing the songwriter, and he's a real songwriter too. Mm -hmm. And I, I forgot the whole story, but in other words, the song didn't exist from way back when. How's the, how'd it go? The actual song? No, 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 the storyline. Uh, you mean why they needed the song? No, 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 how they got it. Uh, I guess they just backdated it. Oh, that's right. Yes, you're right. They backdated it, meaning it didn't exist. They lied and they put it in the Library of Congress or Copyright Office. I don't know, one of those things. And uh, it existed because, you know, that whole theory that I have, it's not a theory, it's a gatekeeper. You put your shill, your spy, your insider in there, wherever it is, and so seven pillars of society. They're pretty much blindfolded, standing at the gate, supposed to the guard and uh, they're saying okay so how much are you gonna pay me and you know they're asking prices dirt cheap usually they'll take anything sometimes they get greedy and they're like okay so they have a gatekeeper <laughs> and they just pass it through and I'm like oh lovely it's not impossible these things happen you know yeah we have some experience with this not not being the bad guys, being gatekeepers, but uh, it being done to us, obviously. And we are just gonna share a little bit every day what we've been going through. And uh, we'll leave it up to you guys to decide, but I mean, this stuff you can't, you can't argue with. We have everything documented. We verified everything. And that whole BS about the room numbers and stuff. Like I said, they said it helps, but we know who everybody is, so it doesn't matter. It should have. And how many times they said no, it should have gotten to us. Yeah. And in some cases, they were expecting it. They're like, come on now. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's called interference. And as we discover more, it can be called other things too. But, um, right? Very, very interesting to say the least. That's so. Uh, what I want you guys to do is, uh, if you're one of these bad guys, and I don't mean to sound infantile, but what do you call these people? They're acting infantile. Why not call it what it is? You have a choice. You either get off the sinking ship and help us, or you're gonna sink with the ship. I mean, is there another way for them? Not really, no. So, I don't know. I, if I were you, I would choose to help the nice people. Yeah. Yep. 
you know, maybe we'll come and dance for you. Our company is really, really good. We're professionals. We also have a, you know, pre-pro team too. Maybe we'll come dance for you, you know, pay us, we'll do a nice little thing for you, help you guys out. This can go very well. That's when I'm like, oh my God, I don't understand why you'd be stupid enough to do this. You know? Yeah. I, it's not funny. <laughs> lovely. Anyway, be bold, be beautiful, be strong, be, be you, be human, be lovely, be noble, be truthful, be factual, be good, <laughs> behave. <laughs> There's a lot of bees there. Yeah, Jesus has the bee attitudes. Oh, yeah. I got bees too. But, um, really, I can't say there are just no words because I have plenty of words for these people. Anything else you want to... Um, I don't know, you mentioned a lot, so... Yeah, just get off the sinking ship and help or sink. So, that's it. Yeah, we're in good standing. All right, so... Let's very briefly talk about, because this has been in the news too lately, pray for your enemies, love your enemies. Okay guys, let's just look at this factually. Uh, God annihilated enemies. You can pray for them. You pray for repentance, right? And you pray for them to get some sense into their heads and come over to your side. That's what you pray for. Yeah. There, you prayed for your enemies. God also says, do not get haughty in spirit should, uh, you know, for God to cast judgment on your enemies. This isn't haughtiness at all. We are giving the gospel message saying, hey, you have an opportunity, you have a chance. We're giving you a way, right? The law has provision too. It doesn't mean that you're going to get away with it. It doesn't mean that we won't get major restitution, credit, money, you know, everything that we deserve because, hey, it should have been ours to begin with. Uh, and help you guys helping us get where we should have been, which is way into the stratosphere, you know. Uh, we're also saying there's forgiveness. Not to say, oh, we're going to forgive you and you don't have to give restitution on any form. We don't do that. No more. You know, if you accidentally break somebody's cow or whatever, how it went in the Old Testament, you had to provide a new cow at least an equal or bigger, more value. Yeah. We've made mistakes and we've had to do that too. And we were glad to do so. And you can make out great deals that way. You really can. It's amazing. Um, and then uh, loving on your enemies. Well, what does that look like? Well, the Lord says, I chasten those I love. I discipline those I love. You guys need to be disciplined. You did wrong. That's loving on your enemies. I mean, really, the Bible says protect your home. You're a fool if you don't. Protect your property. You're a fool if you don't. Old Testament. Just because Jesus came does not mean that you just throw out the Old Testament. That's a big fallacy and a big no-no that a lot of, you know, new believers in Christ have. Yeah. No, you still protect your family. I mean, you don't open the door and let the thief come in and, you know, rape and pillage and kill your family. What kind of person are you? God's gonna hold you accountable for that. That's not loving on your enemies. Loving on your enemies is A, stopping them and making them pay the price so they don't repeat their offenses again. Let, let's get down to the right definition. I am so tired of all these pastors who aren't teaching it right from the pulpit. I am so tired of all these people who are just, you know, oh, I love you. Sure, you're being abusive to me, but I love you anyway. And it's like that loving somebody who's being abusive is holding them to account. That's exactly what the Lord means. You know, he says, turn the other cheek. But if you're watching somebody murder somebody and you're turning the cheek and ignoring it, you're going to be held accountable for that, especially if it's a child. Yeah, context is needed for that type of situation exactly. anyway. Exactly. 
and people were just kind of like, what? Because I've been.